if you don't have um, yoga blocks, you may want to grab something um, just to, to um, bring the ground a little closer to you. So you could use um, like a towel, paper towel roll, toilet paper roll, stack of books. Um, but if not, we'll make do. All right. All right, guys. This is strange and exciting. Um, I'm going to start seated, but I'd like for all of you to lay down onto your backs. I'm just going to stay upright so you can hear me. So come onto your backs, and once you get there, bend the knees. So if the feet are just about uh, hips width, the knees will point straight up towards the ceiling. And then let your hands land where they want to land. They can stay anchored someplace on your body, or you can bring them to either side of you. And then just let your eyes close. If that feels a little bit much, you can just let the gaze start to get um, soft and fuzzy. And take a few moments here just to kind of drop in, check in with yourself. Give yourself the opportunity to take a pause, a personal pause within this big global pause that we've been asked to take. And as you move into stillness, as the body starts to slow down, if you find that your mind starts to rev up, let whatever comes up be there, but recognize that you don't have to follow these thoughts and feelings down their rabbit holes. And see if you can create, actually you can even visualize it, space around whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling. And then imagine filling this space with your breath. So start to fill out the breath a little bit. Notice where you feel it most uh, sensationally in your body. And chances are you might feel it a little more acutely in your chest. And if so, see if you can direct the breath lower so that as you inhale, you're feeling your belly rise. And then as you exhale, you find that slight tuning in of your navel back towards your spine. Start to get the breath going in through the nose, out through the nose. So it may have that kind of thick texture to it, a little constriction in the back of the throat. And as the breath starts to drop in deeper, imagine that space getting wider and wider. You can keep your eyes closed or you can blink them open. Draw your knees into your chest. And then just take a little uh, rock side to side that you massage out the low back. You can make it a little circular. If you'd like, make sure you get both directions. And then keep the right knee hugged in towards your chest. You're going to put the sole of the left foot on the ground so your left knee points straight up towards the ceiling. And then you'll cross your right ankle over your left knee. And then pause here for a moment. Really firm up the connection between your ankle and your knee. Flex through the right foot. And then you can do this with your right hand or you can just do it muscularly. Start to press that right knee forward away from you. And if this feels like enough, trust that it is, you can stay here. If you wanna take it a little bit further, a little bit deeper, you'll draw the left leg in towards you and then interlace your hands either at your hamstring, the underbelly of your thigh or the shin. And continue to press that right knee forward in space. Continue to flex through the right foot. And then you can start to rock side to side a little bit, almost like you're flossing through the hip. And as you move east to west, keep driving that knee forward. Keep breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. And then you'll keep the shape in the legs. You're just going to unlace your arms so they come out to, um, to your sides. And then start to tip this shape in the legs over to the left. So the sole of the right foot will come flat 
to the ground outside of your mat. Keep that right knee pointing up towards the ceiling. And then see if you can take hold of your right ankle with your left hand. You may need to scoot the um, butt a little closer towards you. And then very gently pull back on the right ankle. And then muscularly, you're going to press forward with the right knee, similarly to how you did when you were on your back. And then you can keep this forward pressure or you can play with kind of releasing it so the knee um, moves back towards you a little bit and then pressing it out again so it becomes a little more dynamic. Again, getting into the outer hip. And come back to that breath in through the nose, out through the nose. And then let go of the right ankle. You're gonna come back to that figure four so you're flat on your back. And now you're gonna slide the right knee on top of the left so your upper thigh bones are crossing. Now you could stay here. If this feels like enough, you'll just keep the knees crossed. If you feel like you've got the space for it, you may double wrap your legs so that you're crossing your right ankle underneath your left shin for equal legs. And then you're going to reach your arms up like you're reaching for the ceiling. Cross your right elbow underneath your left. And then same thing here, you could stay like this. If this feels a little aggressive on your shoulders, you could grab um, for your shoulder blades like you're giving yourself a hug. Or you'll find the double wrap so that the wrists and the palms cross. And then from here, you're going to curl up. Lift the head and the shoulder blades so your elbows are pointing towards your knee. And then pull your ribs down like you're trying to point the floater ribs towards the mat underneath you. Take a breath in, get strong in that pressing down through the rib cage. And then start to lengthen this shape out so you'll reach your fingertips back, you'll point the toes forward, think of getting longer. And then draw the elbows back in towards the knees, take a breath in, pull your ribs down. And then lengthen the lever out to any amount. Then pull yourself back in, elbows to knees. One more lengthen out. And then unravel all of that. Uncross the legs, bring your feet down to the mat. We're just going to take an easy bridge pose. So it's not a deep back bend. You'll just press through your heels to lift your hips. Lengthening out the fronts of the hips. And then slowly lower back down. Draw the knees into the chest. You can take a couple rock side to side. And then we'll do the same thing other side. We'll start with the right foot coming down to the mat, right knee pointed up. Left ankle will cross over the right knee. And then pause for a moment, firm up that connection between left ankle and right knee. Flex through the left foot so you have enough pressure to press that left knee forward. And if you'd like, you could use your hand to influence the uh, hip open. And again, if this feels like enough, stay here. If you want to take it a little farther, you'll pull the right leg in towards you, interlacing your hands, the underbelly of your thigh or the top of the shin. And then continue to press that left knee forward in space. And you may like to rock side to side, make it a little more dynamic. And then unlace your arms, bring them out to either side of you. Keep this shape in your legs. You're just going to tip it to the right. So the sole of the left foot plant onto the ground. Your left knee will point straight up towards the ceiling. And then you may need to scooch the foot closer in towards your chest. See if you can take hold of the left ankle with the right hand. And then same as before, you'll create a little bit of distance by trying to press the left knee forward. And then you can keep it pressing forward. You can play with letting it kind of swing forward and back so you release and then press away again, flossing into the outer hip. Take one or two more little swivels if you're moving that left leg. And then come back to your figure four on your back. Now you're just gonna slide the left knee over the right so the upper thigh bones are crossed. And again, you can stay here or you may find the double wrapping of the legs. And then you'll reach the arms up for the ceiling, energize through your elbows. Cross the left arm underneath the right. Either finding the single wrap, reaching for your shoulder blades, or finding the double wrap for eagle arms. And then curl your shoulder blades off of the mat. Pull your elbows in towards your knees. Take a breath in, pull your ribcage down. 
Keep the rib cage pulled down as you lengthen arms back, legs forward. And then pull back in, little crunch. Extend out, reach. One more time, come in. One more time, lengthen out. And then unwrap everything. Feet come flat. One more little bridge, press down through your heels, lift your hips. And then slowly come down, upper spine, middle spine, lower spine. Draw your knees into your chest. And then bring your hands to the uh, bottoms of your thighs, to your hamstrings. And start to roll back and forth across the length of your spine. And you're massaging the entire length of your spine. And then next time that you come up, see if you can balance on your sit bones. You can keep your hands underneath your thighs and use this grip to pull your chest forward. Feel the shoulders soften back. And then you can stay here. You may reach your arms forward, balance in the basana with the knees bent. You might lengthen through the legs. Hold for just a couple breaths, let things get a little spicy. And then cross your ankles. You'll come onto all fours. And set yourself up in a tabletop so that you have your hands very deliberately underneath your shoulders and you have your knees very deliberately underneath your hips. And then look down at your hands. Notice if um, maybe your thumbs are curling in. See if you can really spread the hands so you have slices of the mat between each finger. And then start to notice where the weight is in your hands. For a lot of us, we're gonna dump a lot of weight into the heels of the hands and that's gonna tire out the wrists. So see if you can maybe put a little bit of pressure into the part of your hand where your finger connects to your palms. So you get a little bit of grip, grippiness. Maybe there's a little lift in the center of your palms. And then tuck the toes underneath you. And start to think of this shape now as less of a tabletop and more as half of a plank. So you'll press down through all the points of contact with your hands. You're gonna press down with your knees. You're even gonna press into the um, pads of your toes. And in this pressing down, you may start to feel kind of a lifting of your abdominals. Things start to fire up a little bit. And then I want you to keep all of this pressing down. You're just gonna lift the knees off of the mat so they're covering. And you're gonna stay for a couple breaths here. And as your body starts to heat up, your breath is gonna to start to shake. See if you can keep the mind steady, stay with it. Let it get uncomfortable. Take one more breath in. And then bring the knees down to the mat. You're gonna bring your big toes in towards one another, let the knees separate slightly. And then um, walk the left hand forward just slightly. You're gonna bring the right hand behind your head. And then lift your elbow a little bit so you feel your shoulder blade kind of secure itself a little bit more onto the back of your rib cage. The muscles are gonna to start to engage. And with your next breath in, you're gonna open up to the left. I'm sorry, to the right. Rotate to the right, point that elbow straight up. And then as you exhale, you'll twist to the left, elbow, elbow. Again, inhale, open up, trying to move through the rib cage, not the hips. And then exhale, elbow, elbow. One more time, open up. This time you'll stay, and you're gonna reach that right arm up, spreading the collarbone, take a breath in. And then as you exhale, you're gonna thread this right arm behind the left. See if you can bring the right shoulder blade down to the ground, right ear down to the ground. And then this left arm could crawl out in front of you. You could bring it behind you for half of a bind. You could keep it where it is. Take a couple breaths here. Maybe you shift your hips to the right a little bit. Think of spiraling that left lung up a little bit. Take one more breath in here. And then pull that left hand back underneath you. Come back up onto all fours. And then parallel your knees. You're gonna slide the right leg behind you. Keep your toes anchored, keep your fingers spread, and just start to shift forward and back. Pumping through the leg a little bit to open up behind the knee, the Achilles, you can roll around a little bit to get into all five toes. Notice if you do have a tendency to favor the big toe or the pinky toe, see if you can get nice and even. And then you're going to pick the right leg up and you're gonna cross it behind you 
So the left knee is forward. So you can swivel the shins out a little bit so the upper thigh bones are crossed. And then you're gonna flip the right hand so the right fingers face backwards towards your knees. And if that feels a little too aggressive, you can let the fingers turn out to the side just so we're not, um, we're not in the normal stance with our hands here, opening up the wrists a little bit. And then from here, we're gonna start to cow cat through the spine. So as you inhale, you'll let your chest pull forward as the belly button sinks. And then as you exhale, you'll round, pull your belly button up towards your spine, let the head get heavy. Again, inhale, come forward, chest pulls between your upper arms. And then as you exhale around, see if you can puff up the space in between your shoulder blades. Do one more together, inhale for a cow. Exhale, round for cat. And then flip your right palm forward. You're gonna slide the right leg behind you. And then just swivel that left shin back so it's behind your hip. Then find that downward pressure that you found in your tabletop. Press through the hands, press through your left knee and shin. Feel your navel lift towards your spine. And then with the next breath in, you're going to lift the right foot off of the mat, flexing through the right heel. And pause here. Notice if your weight has shifted to the left, you square off the hips. And then with the next breath in, you're going to sweep your left arm forward, thumb up, pinky finger down. Take a breath in, get longer. And then as you exhale, draw your elbow in towards your knee. They don't have to touch. Keep the spine long. And then extend out on the inhale. Exhale, draw your elbow in towards your knee. One more time, extend out. And then hand comes down, foot comes down, slide right leg back underneath you. Reset so you're in your tabletop. And then big toes come to touch. We'll do the same sequence starting with the left. You separate the knees, bring the left hand behind your head. And lift your elbow, find that engagement of the shoulder blade onto the back of the rib cage. Take an inhale, rotate open to the left. Exhale, elbow, elbow twist. One more time, inhale, open up. Exhale, twist. And then this time as you inhale, open up, you'll reach your left arm up, spread the collarbones apart. And then this time with the exhale, the arm threads behind. Left shoulder comes down to the ground, left ear. Reach the top arm forward. Or you could find a bind. And no, neither of those feel quite right. You can leave the hand underneath the shoulder. Then maybe you lean to the left a little bit to spiral the right lung up. One more breath in here. And then pull the right hand back underneath you. Come back up onto all fours. Left leg lengthens behind you. Nice long spine. Abs engage. Start to shift forward and back. Noticing where you're putting the weight in your feet. Which toes are the most active? Can you spread all five toes? Maybe roll the ankle around to get uh, into the edges that you wouldn't naturally get into. And then bring the shoulders back over the wrists. You're gonna lift up the left leg and then cross it behind the right. So the upper thigh bones are crossing, swivel the feet and shins out. Flip the left palm forward, backwards rather, so the heel of the hand is forward. And then inhale, come into your cow spine with the chest. Exhale, round for cat, drop the head. Inhale, come forward. Exhale to round. One more time, inhale, come forward. Last time, exhale, round. And then flip the left fingers forward. Left leg goes behind you. You'll swivel that right shin out. Press down into your hands. Draw the navel up and in so your tailbone lengthens down. And then with the next breath in, you'll lift the left foot off of the ground, flex through the heel, energize the leg. Notice if your weight has shifted to the right knee. Notice if your cow spine is kind of crept in. Pull the belly button up. And then with your next breath in, you'll reach the right arm forward, thumb up, pinky finger down. Take a breath in, get longer. Exhale, pull your elbow and knee in underneath you. And then inhale, re-extend. Exhale, elbow and knee come in. One more time, inhale, extend. Exhale, elbow, knee, draw in. And reach back out, put the hand down, left toes come down, slide the left knee back underneath you. Reset onto all fours. 
Take an inhale, come into cow spine, let the belly button really drop down, let the chest really pull forward. And then tuck your toes underneath you. Take a fresh breath in. And then it's a downward facing dog with your breath out. Lift your sit bones up and back. And then take a couple moments here to move however you like to move to settle into your down dog. Notice how the breath has changed now that the body started to heat up a little bit now that the heart is above the head. And then in the next breath or two, start to still your down dog. Bring your attention again to your hands. Notice if the fingers have crunched, see if you can spread them. And then bring a soft bend to your knees so that you can lift your butt bones up and back, lengthen the diagonal from the crown of your head to your tailbone. With your next inhale, pull forward to a plank. And then exhale, downward facing dog, lift those sit bones up and back. You can keep the knees soft. Inhale forward to a plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale forward to a plank. And then gently bring your knees down to the mat, sit your hips back to your heels, take a child's pose. In child's pose, start to crawl the fingers to the left, they'll come off of the mat. And then see if you can scoot your right fingers, even just a couple of millimeters past the left, so you start to feel a lengthening across the right side of your body. And then try to sink your right hip back towards your right heel. And then take a couple deep breaths here, breathing into the right side of your rib cage, like a fish would breathe through its gills. So as you inhale, there's an expansion of the ribs. Exhale, there's a gentle contraction. And then passing through center, you'll crawl the fingers to the right. And then same thing, you'll try to scoot those left fingertips past the right. Try to heavy the left sit bone and sink it back to your heel. And take a couple long deep breaths like a fish breathing through its gills and into the intercostals between your ribs. And then come back through center. Pull yourself back up onto all fours, find your cow spine, tuck your toes, breath in. Breath out, downward facing dog, sit bones lift up and back. And step your feet together in your down dog. Take an inhale to reach the right leg long behind you. And then bend your knee. Let your hips peel open to the right. Without letting your right armpit spin open so you can keep the shoulders square. Then lengthen this right leg out. Square off your hips. Maybe you bring a bend to the left knee. Flex through the right foot breath and get longer. And then as you exhale, pull your knee in towards your nose, get a little round, let the shoulder blades puff. And then send the leg long behind you, down dog split, breath in. Breath out, pull the knee in towards your chest. One more time, inhale, extend. And then exhale, pull the knee in towards your chest, pause here, let it get a little bit hot. Pull the knee a little bit higher, shift your weight forward. And then step the foot in between the hands. Come up onto your fingertips, chest lifts. This is a good place for blocks or whatever kind of prop you have if the ground feels far away. And then bring the back knee down. Reach your arms up just for a moment. Get a little bit of lift. And then bring the hands down to bring the front foot. Lengthen through both legs to any amount. Pull that right hip back as you do. Think of bumping the chest forward. And then re-bend both knees. Back knee comes down as the arms lift up. Exhale, hands come down. Lengthen through the legs. Pull those sit bones up and back. One more time. Back knee comes down. Arms lift. Hands come down. Lengthen through the front leg. This time bring a pretty deep bend to your back leg, to your left knee. And maybe you pick the right foot up off of the mat. Think of turning your uh, right pinky toe backwards in space like it's trying to reach towards your shin. And then take your left hand, it's going to cross over the right shin. Take a walk to the middle of the mat on the right side. Maybe you bring more of a bend to the back knee, keep spiraling that right hip bone backwards. 
And then come back to a low runner's lunge, rebend the right knee. Left leg is nice and long, nice and active. The left hand will land a little forward of the right foot. And then reach the right arm up, low lunge twist. And then see if you can find a little external rotation in that left arm. So upper arm bone turns out so that you find that kind of tacking of the shoulder blade onto the back of the rib cage. And then keep that um, alignment in the arm, that security in the shoulder. As you start to wiggle the front foot, the right foot towards the middle of the mat, you'll come onto the outside edge of your left foot, the knife edge. So you're in a supported side plank. And press down to your right foot for some security. And then reach the top arm forward. And then start to reach the top arm backwards as you let the hips descend just about halfway. And then press down through your hands and feet to lift back up. And then let the hips descend down. One more time, come up. Circle the right hand down, step back to your plank. Pause here for a moment. Bring your attention to your hands, firm them up. Firm up your thigh bones, pull the chest forward. And then you can use your knees here. You'll stay in one piece to slowly lower down to the mat. See if you can get the chest and the pelvis to hit it once. And then once you're down, bring your hands off of the mat. Come up onto your fingers. The elbows will point straight up. Press down to the tops of your feet. Roll up for a cobra. You may stop here. You may find a little more length through the arms. Do what feels right. And then exhale, slowly lower back down. One more time, inhale, roll up. And then exhale back down. And bring the forehead to the mat. Bring your hands behind your head. Lift your elbows up so they point straight out to either side. Lift your chest, lift your chin in towards your neck. Find a little back bend here, keep the feet down. Then reach the arms forward. Keep the chest lifted, take a breath in. And then on your breath out, pull your elbows back with the chest. Keep the chest lifted as you reach forward again. Exhale, pull the elbows back. Hands come down to frame your ribcage. Press back up onto your knees. And then downward facing dog with the sit bones up and back. Step the feet together. Inhale to lift the left leg up. And your left knee, let the hips peel open to the left, keeping that left shoulder spiraling down. Then lengthen the legs, square off the hips. Take an inhale, reach through your heel. Exhale, pull your knee in towards your nose, find some roundness. And then inhale, reach up and back, long line. Exhale, knee pulls in towards your nose as your shoulders shift forward. Inhale, down dog split, reach the leg back. Exhale, pull the knee in towards your nose, this time hold. Press down into your hands to lift your knee a little bit higher, look forward, shift forward. Step the left foot in between your hands. Come up onto your fingertips, tall chest. Bend your back knee down, like tap as you reach the arms up, breath in. And then breath out, hands come down. Lengthen through both legs. The legs don't have to be pinned straight, they're just getting longer. And you'll scrub that left outer hip backwards in space. Rebend the knees, right knee taps down, arms lift, breath in. Then hands come down, lengthen through the legs. One more time, back knee down, arms lift, breath in. Then hands come down. This time as you lengthen the front leg, you'll bend the back knee. Maybe you peel the left toes up off of the mat. And then the right hand will cross over the left shin. Take a walk to the middle of the mat. Pull that left outer hip back. You may kind of lean the hips to the right. And then crawl back to your low runner's lunge. Back leg nice and active. Think of lifting the right thigh bone. Right hand will come a little forward of your left foot. Reach the left arm up for a twist. And then find that security in the shoulder, so shoulder girl. Pull the outer arm into external rotation. 
And then start to wiggle the left foot to the middle of the mat. You may need to scoot the right foot back a little bit for your supported side plank. Then reach the top arm forward. Start to descend to the hips as you reach left arm backwards. And then press down through what's making contact with the mat to lift that up. And then slowly descend. Reach back up. One more time, reach back behind you. And then this time, hand comes down, step back to a plank. Lower yourself down to the mat, one piece. Hands come off of the mat, wide cobra. Inhale, ripple up, lift the chest, press down through the feet. Exhale, roll back down. One more time, inhale, lift up. Exhale, ripple back down. Our head comes flat, hands come behind the head. Lift the elbows, lift the chest, press into the tops of the feet. Reach the arms forward, energize through your elbows, breath in. Breath out, pull the elbows back. Keep the chest where it is, reach the arms forward. Exhale, pull the elbows back. Hands come down to frame your ribcage. Press yourself up onto all fours. And then downward facing dog. And then start to walk forward. And we'll come into a forward fold at the front of the mat. So take your time with this. You could always walk your hands back towards your toes to meet yourself in the middle. And then once you're folded forward, interlace your hands at the small of your back. So you can keep your elbows bent here. If this feels a little too aggressive, you could grab for your forearms. To take it a step further, you'll lengthen through the arms so that the pinky edge of your fist almost reaches over the crown of your head. And then take an inhale, lengthen your spine, come into a long chair pose with the arms bound. And then exhale, fold forward. A little more length through the legs. Again, inhale, lift your chest. Knuckles reach back. Exhale to fold. One more time, inhale, reach up. And then exhale, release, let the hands come down underneath your shoulders. And then let's take a slow roll up. Keep the weights heavy in your heels. You can use your abdominals to articulate the lengthening of your spine. And then once you come all the way up, take a breath and lift your shoulders up, back, down. And then find Tadasana Mountain Pose. You can have your feet um, together. You can have them slightly apart. Take what feels most stable. Let your eyes close. Take a moment here. Come back to your breath. Take a moment. Notice where your weight is in your feet. Check in with the quality of your breath. Check in with the quality of your attention. And see if you can use this breath once again to sharpen your attention. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And then out your mouth. Move through Surya Namaskar A. Take an inhale, reach your arms up to your fingertips. As you exhale, soften, fold forward over the legs. Knees stay soft, fingertips leave the mat. Take an inhale, lengthen your spine. Try to chest bump the wall in front of you as your sit bones reach back. And then hands come flat, step back to a plank. So lower down to the mat. You can take a chaturanga. You can stay in one piece. You can skip it entirely. If you're taking the vinyasa, you'll pull forward to the back bend of your choice. Could be an up dog, could be a cobra. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Lift those sit bones up and back. Stay with your breath here. Just notice where your mind wants to go in these moments of stillness. And just notice. And with your next inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or hop your feet in between your hands. Inhale, find a long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale, reach your arms up, look up. Exhale, hands down to your sides, Tadasana. Again, inhale, reach the arms up, look up. Exhale, soften, fold forward over the legs, hands to mat. 
Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step back, foot back, lower yourself down. Inhale, we'll pull you forward for a back bend. Exhale, we'll pull you up and back, downward facing dog. Your next inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or float your feet in between your hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale, reach the arms up, look up. And then exhale, hands to your side. Let's do one more. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, soften, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step back, float back. Inhale, pull forward, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale to bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or walk feet in between your hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale to reach the arms up and look up. And then exhale, hands will float down to your sides. So come to the front of the mat. Then you can stand again with your feet together or slightly separated. We're gonna take just a simple balance here, so not necessarily easy, but pretty straightforward. You're gonna shift weight into your right foot. Peel the left foot off of the mat. Draw your left knee up towards your chest. Push the ground away with that right foot. And then reach your arms up. Take an inhale, lift your left knee a little bit higher. And then you're gonna step your left foot behind the right. So the left foot will come off of the mat. And then bend the front knee as much as you need to to anchor that back foot down. I'm gonna show you guys this way. And then you're gonna take hold of your left wrist with your right hand, and then pull that left wrist to the right. You can let the left hip kind of bump out to the left. Think of fanning those left ribs out. Take a breath in here. And then with the breath out, you're gonna bring the hands down to the mat, they'll frame the right foot. And then take a big step back with that left foot. So you're in a low runner's lunge. Then bring the hands flat, step back to a downward facing dog. Take an inhale, reach the right leg long behind you. And then pull the right knee in towards your chest. You're gonna step the right foot forward, but this time the right foot's gonna come a little closer to the right hand. So your right pinky toe kind of lands near where your uh, right thumb is. And then hop the right foot, the left foot in slightly, heel turns down, toes turn kind of to the upper left of the mat, more so than out. And then reach your arms up, you're in a warrior one. And then take a moment, notice what's going on with the feet. Can you press into the outside edge of your back foot so that you really firm up that back leg? And if you feel like you're on a tight rope, you can wiggle the right foot to the right a little bit more. And now think of your legs like steering wheels. You're gonna press down through your feet to steer that right hip backwards in space. And let's reach the arms forward. Right arm is gonna cross underneath left. So again, you can stop here at the single bind. You can grab your shoulders. You could go for the double bind where you wrap up the wrists. Keep pressing through that back leg. It's gonna act as your anchor here. Take an inhale, lift your fingertips up, maybe you lean back slightly. And then as you exhale, fold forward. Now the right shoulder can rest on the right knee if it needs to. Otherwise, you'll snuggle the right shoulder inside of the right knee. And then look behind you, make sure you can still see the arch of your left foot. Really power up through that back leg so you're not fatiguing the front leg. You're sharing your body weight between both legs. Let the head go. And then unwind, reach your arms back up, come back to that strong warrior one. Hands come down. You can take a vinyasa or just step back, downward facing dog. And bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or walk your feet in between your hands. Inhale, find a long spine. Exhale, release. Then inhale to reach your arms up and look up. And exhale, hands come down to your sides. Take a moment to land. Find a steady mountain pose. 
And now start to shift weight into the left foot. You're gonna draw the right knee into your chest. So you can get a nice 90 degree angle on that right leg, flex through the right foot. Push the ground away with your left foot. Then reach the arms up. Lift the right knee a little bit higher. And then step this right foot behind the left. So the upper thigh bones are crossed again. Bend the front knee as much as you need to to anchor that back foot down. Then take hold of the right wrist, reach up and over to the left. Let that right hip bump out, let the right ribs fan like they were a beautiful fan out. One more breath in. Then with your breath out, bring the hands down to frame the left foot. Take a big step back with your right foot. Low runner's lunge. And plant the hands down, step back. Downward facing dog. Inhale to lift the left leg up. Pull the left knee in towards your chest. Step the left foot forward a little bit to the left of center so the left pinky toe comes near the left thumb. Spin the right heel down, right toe will point towards the upper right of the mat. Firm up your legs, press into the outer edge of that back foot. Then strong lift up, warrior one. Again, use your legs like steering wheels. Steer that left hip back in space so you become a little more square. Then reach the left the, uh, arms forward. Left elbow will cross underneath right. Find your eagle wrap that feels right. Take an inhale, lift your chest. Maybe you lean back slightly. And then exhale, start to soften, come forward. Keep pressing into that back leg, it's your rudder. Left shoulder will rest on the left knee or snuggle inside of it. Let the head get heavy and hang. Then take an inhale, reach your arms up, unwind, warrior one. Hands come down to frame the front foot. This time we'll step back to a plank. Bring your knees down to the mat. Sit your hips back to your heels, take a child's pose. How you guys doing? Can't hear you, but I'll assume that means you're doing well. Take a couple more breaths in here. And try not to use this as, a, as an opportunity to assess how things are going or analyze. Let's come back to that breath and it pull you back to your mat. And then you'll pull yourself back up onto all fours. And downward facing dog, lift the sit bones up and back. Come onto your toes, bend your knees, and then step or walk to the front of the mat. Inhale, let's find a long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale, reach your arms up and look up. And then exhale, hands come to your sides. Find your mountain pose. Start to shift weight into the right foot. And then pull the left knee into your chest. Come back to that simple balance, reach the arms up. Take an inhale, lift the left knee a little bit higher. And this time as you cross the left leg behind, you're gonna come into a little curtsy squat. Pull your prayer hands down to your midline. Both knees bend, the upper thighs are crossed. And then as you come out of this, lift that left foot back up in towards your chest. Again, Cross the left leg behind, bend both knees, prayer pulls down to your midline. One more time, come up, lift the left knee up. Cross the left leg behind, bend your knees. This time stay, get nice and low, but lift the chest. And then bring the hands down to frame the right foot. Big step back with the left leg. Come up onto your fingertips. And then reach the arms up, come into a high lunge. You can keep a little bend in that back leg if it helps you feel a little more stable. Think of spiraling the thigh bones in towards one another. Lift your rib cage up and away from your pelvis. Take a breath in here. And then let's open out warrior two. Front toes will stay facing forward. Back foot will parallel to the back of the mat. And then make sure you're not letting the right arm win the tug of war here. Make sure this right hip isn't drooping down. See if you can pick this right hip bone up. 
it nice and square over your pelvis. Take an inhale, reach your arms up as you lengthen the front leg. Exhale, come back, warrior two. One more time, inhale, come up. And then this time as you exhale, keep the arms, uh, keep the legs straight, separate the arms. And then heel toe the back foot in, let the left toes point to the left. Start to hinge into triangle, the right hip will come back. And then the right hand will land somewhere on your shin, maybe it comes down outside of the foot. But try to get your torso aligned with your front shin. And then roll the rib cage open. Roll, roll that right shoulder back. And with your next breath in, you'll reach that top arm forward. And then make a circle here. Bring the left hand down to the mat. You're going to parallel your feet. You're in a wide-legged forward fold. And the knees can stay soft here. They don't have to be stick straight. Take an inhale. Find the long spine. Exhale, soft and fold forward. Let the crown of the head reach down towards the mat. Take an inhale, long spine. And then exhale, crawl back. Low runner's lunge, right toes face forward, left leg long. Let's take a simple twist here. Reach the arm up, roll that left shoulder back. And then hand comes down, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Exhale, step or float your feet between your hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale, reach the arms up, look up. Exhale, Tadasana, hands to the side. Separate your feet, find your footing. Start to shift weight into the left foot, pull the right knee into your chest, reach the arms up. And then cross the right leg behind the left as you bend both knees, your prayer hands will pull down towards your chest. And then press down into your front foot, lift back up, right knee pulls into your chest. And then cross the knee behind, squat down, chest stays lifted. One more time, circle the arms up, draw the right knee in. And then cross the right knee behind, this time you'll stay low. Stay steady in your breath. One more full breath in. Hands come down to frame the left foot. Take a big step back with that right foot. Low runner's lunge, really power up that back leg, come up onto your fingertips. And then reach the arms up, high lunge. Bring a little softness to the back leg if you need it. Take one more breath in here. And then open up, warrior two. Adjust your stance as needed. Find a lifting of the left hip bone up and away from your thigh. Arms nice and long. Take an inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, soften back. One more time, inhale up, exhale back. This time as you reach your arms up, you'll bring that back foot in. As the arms separate, it's a triangle pose. So you'll cut this left hip back, hinge forward. Left hand comes to shin, maybe your block or whatever prop you have, maybe down to the ground, but you'll keep the torso lined up with your left leg. And then roll open. Take a breath in, reach the top arm forward, and then let it circle you down, wide leg forward fold, parallel the feet. Take an inhale, long spine. Exhale, fold. Take an inhale, lengthen the spine once again, and then pivot back, low runner's lunge. Let's take a twist, reach the left arm up, roll open. Think of almost pulling your knees apart so as to take any slack out of the shape. And bring the left hand down. And then this time, let's just step the right foot forward to meet the left. Take a slow roll up to stand. All right, reset, last little bit here. You're gonna start to shift weight into the right foot. And then once again, you're going to peel this left foot off of the mat. And then start to bring a little bit of a bend to your right leg, to that base leg. And then reach the arms forward. 
going to cross your left elbow underneath the right. So you might stay here. You might grab through your shoulder blades. You may find a double bind. Now start to bend even further through the standing leg. You're going to wrap the left knee over the right. So you could pause here, use your left big toe as a little kickstand. You may find the double bind by wrapping your left ankle around the right shin. For today, let's keep the chest up. So as the hips sink back, you'll keep lifting the chest towards the thumbs. And then just like in Warrior One, see if you can snuggle that left hip backwards. Take one more breath in here. And then start to unwind. See if you can come out of it as you came in. Reach the arms up, draw the left knee in towards your chest. And then let's take a big step back, come into your low lunge, and make you just move that front foot forward. And then once again, we'll find a twist. Right arm lifts. And like we did in the beginning, you're going to heel toe this right foot to the middle of the mat. So you could stay here. Or you might step back to a side plank. Keep that top hip rolling forward. Long line, bottom wrist to top wrist. So if you're in your side plank, try lifting the right foot, flexing through the heel. You're going to draw the right knee in towards your chest. Bring the right hand down. Now you're in your three-point plank. We've been here before. Start to draw your right knee towards your left elbow. And then extend the shin out. Come onto the knife edge of the right foot. Lift the left arm up. You're going to fall in triangle. And then find that external rotation of the bottom shoulder. Push the ground away with your right hand. Left hand comes down. Come back to a plank. Bring your knees down to the mat. And then just sit your hips back onto your heels. Take a moment. Back to your breathing. And then start to walk the fingertips behind you. Chest lifts. So you could stay here rolling the fronts of the shoulders back. If you want to take a deeper back bend, you'll lift your hips off of your heels. And then slowly come back down. Crawl the fingertips forward. Downward facing dog. And then bend the knees, look forward, step or float your feet to the top of the mat. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale, reach your arms up, look up. And then to Nasana, hands to your sides. All right, start to shift weight into the left foot. And peel the right foot up. Knee towards chest, a little softness in the standing leg. Reach the arms forward. Left elbow will cross underneath right, find your eagle arms. And find even more bend in the standing leg. Eagle wrap your legs, whatever feels right. So again, if this feels most steady to you, you can let the big toes kind of function as a kickstand, or you could find the double wrap. So you're gonna start to descend hips back as you keep the chest lifted. If you wobble, that's kind of the point. And then start to unravel, reach that right knee back in towards your chest as the arms lift up, take a breath in. And then with the breath out, you'll step back to a low lunge, hands come down. Adjust your legs as needed. Right hand plants down, let's take a twist. And then you're gonna start to wiggle this left foot to the middle of your mat. Again, if this feels like enough, trust that it is. You'll stay here, work on lifting the bottom side of your waist up and away from the ground. Or you'll step the foot back, side plank. Roll that left hip forward. And then maybe you play with lifting the left leg. You'll pull the left knee in towards your chest. Left hand comes down, you're in a three-point plank. Move the left knee towards the right elbow, extend that left leg. Come onto the knife edge of the left foot as you reach the right arm up, side plank, fall in triangle. Right hand comes down, come back to plank. Bring the knees down to the mat, hips to heels. Take a moment. 
And then hands come behind you, second back bend. Take what you need. If you want to take it a little bit deeper, you'll lift your hips off of your heel. And then come forward. I think we're at about time. Can I go a couple minutes over, Sam? All right, I'm going to go a couple minutes over if you guys have to leave. Go ahead. So come to a seated position. I'll face you guys. Cross the right shin in front of the left. Bring your hands out to either side of you. And then take an inhale, lift your chest up. I want you to think of this as a hinge. So rather than rounding forward, try to get your belly button to reach past your shins. As you start to come forward and down, you can walk the hands forward. You can rest on your forearms. Let the head go. Again, notice what you notice. When the body starts to slow down, when the physical rigor starts to dissipate, can you keep your attention rigorously attentive to your breathing, to the sensations of the body? And then come back up. Let's just simply switch out the legs to the left. Shin will come forward. Again, inhale to lift the chest. And then start to pull your sternum forward. Belly button tries to reach past your shins. Walk the hands forward to any amount. And you'll let the head go so you can still keep that length in the low back. A breath in and a breath out. And then make your way back up. Bring your feet flat, knees point straight up towards the ceiling. Let's reach the arms forward. Lift the chest, really root down through your feet. Then pull your belly button back towards your spine. Take a slow roll down to the mat. See if you control, can control that last little fifth. Try not to flop. And then when you're down, let your arms fall to your sides. Scoot your hips to the right. Let the knees fall to the left. Take a little twist. Take an inhale. Feel your right lung inflate. And as you exhale, feel the right shoulder get a little heavier. And come back through center. Scoot the hips left, let the knees fall right. Head can stay looking towards the ceiling or you can look over your left shoulder. Take an inhale, breathe into the left lung. Exhale, feel the whole left side of your body weight itself down closer to the mat. And then come back through center. Feet come flat, and then one at a time, lengthen your legs out. Set up for whatever version of Shavasana feels restful to you, so you could lie flat. You could use any of the props you have. You could take a seated meditation. And take, take time to check in. Notice where you're still holding tension. Let your jaw go, let, the, let there be space between your molars. Let your eyelids get heavy, relax the space between the eyebrows. And challenge yourself here in the same way you just challenged your body. Challenge your mind to just stay with the simple sensations of your breath. This laying here on the floor of your own home be enough for the next few moments.
You just notice where your mind has wandered off to, if it's wandered off. Bring it back into your body as your breath starts to deepen. Start to bring some small movement back to your fingers, to your toes. And if you're feeling good on the ground, you can stay where you are. Otherwise, you'll roll over onto one side. And then once you've landed, press yourself back up. Find a tall seat. Let the eyes stay closed. Let the hands just land where they want to land with minimal fidgeting. And for just a few more moments, practice being still. Bring your hands together. And as your thumbs find your sternum, lift your sternum back up into your thumbs. Take up a little more space. And we'll close together with a full breath in through the nose. And then exhale gently out the mouth. Namaste. Thank you guys. I hope you can still see me. This was a <laughs> trial run for me. So um, keep checking back on our on our website. Find me on whatever social media you have. I, I'm not much of a poster, but uh, I suppose the times call for it, so I will be. Um, and reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you guys. I love you. Let's take care of each other. Bye.